Hey, um, it's Ian. I'm doing a different style of video today. Uh, I figured it's about time I show how I do my editing process. So for some of you guys who follow me on Instagram or who know me personally, I do photography. It's like my main hobby when I'm not doing this stuff, you know. And uh, it's the main thing I'm interested in, you know. I really enjoy taking pictures of people. I think it's an art form in its own right. I can't say I'm an expert on everything because, you know, I use my camera and I only know so much about the cameras. Um, I don't really know models. I'm not a huge, like, tech nerd when it comes to cameras and knowing about them. But um, I feel like I do have a pretty good eye and I'm proud of the work I've already done. I've always doubted like my work over the years and I've always looked back and if I take breaks from photography, um, I'll kind of doubt like when I come back to doing it again, do I, do I still have the talent? Like do I still feel like I can do a good job? And I feel like when I'm um, requested or asked by people to do certain shoots, I'm always questioning whether I'm gonna pull through or like do well on them, you know? But you know, I think I've settled over time and I've realized, you know what? If I can come back to doing photo shoots after a time off and I'm still like producing things I'm proud of, what's the big whoop-de-doop? So, anyways, I'm gonna do a screen. Ooh, out. So I haven't edited consistently in in, in a while, uh, but I'm gonna probably go back to stuff I've already done. All right. Um, so let's go to my library. As you can see, I got a bunch of user presets. Actually, go back to develop. A bunch of user presets on the side here, and so this is kind of like. Essentially, this is what I used to edit all of my pictures, okay. And so this is like a database of everything I've imported. So every time I do a shoot, there's like a bunch of pictures I've uploaded at the bottom here. All photographs, I have 29,000. So my god. <laughs> um, so I haven't edited all of these, obviously. You know, with my uh, shoots that I do, I don't edit every single one. I kind of go pick the best ones out and then I, like, you know, do those. I have a kind of a weird process, but as you can see, there's a bunch of them. The ones that are more vibrant and like like these, the ones that uh, stick out like a sore thumb, if you will, uh, those are the ones I've edited and have finished. So, I yeah, this is one of them. Cool. So here's one of Chloe right here that I did for her upcoming album. Whoa. More details to come on that, I'm sure. Um, yeah, so this is a shoot I did with her. And yeah, these are the ones out of the many that I took that I ended up editing. So um, yeah, and I'm happy with some of these. These are pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, this is basically the setup I see whenever I'm done with the shoot. So I'm going to go to back to all photographs. And let me go to, let me actually start with one that I have already edited. And I'm going to go through the steps of like what I did to edit that specific photo. And I'm probably going to reference one that I'm really happy with so that um, you know I can see like what details did I add to make sure everything from corner to corner looked good to me and also yeah I have to preface that uh, some of the styles of editing that I did over the years have changed you know with each shoot I kind of have different uh, looks that I go for or things that I, I like better than the last time so not every shoots kind of consistent like or uh, I guess I guess not every outcome is consistent with the previous so let's see here uh, so for example I did an Amaya shoot here that I really like the pictures but I feel like I did a little bit too overkill on like the saturation so like you see how like the eyes are super blue like yo I kind of went to card, card in the paint with that one and sometimes on a rare occasion I'll go back and edit something from many shoots ago and retouch it or something uh, yeah, so let's actually do this one as an example. I really like this picture. Alright, so this is Sierra. I did a shoot with her like back in August of 2018. And this is across this, uh, the street from my community college. And this is just like a little, literally a random field of flowers and tall grass. And I was like, yo, this kind of looks like it could be lit. And I was looking on Pinterest and Tumblr and all those cool spots. And th that joint, those joints have the best inspiration. I'll tell you that. Like, they had... A bunch of aesthetics. Yeah, I kind of just took inspiration from there, took different poses, and I kind of kind of combined it into one thing I wanted to do. And I told Sierra about it, and this is what we came out with. So yeah, very nice blues, if you will. Look at that. All right, so I'm gonna go to this photo right here, and so I'm under the develop tab. This is what I use to edit. This is, gives me all the options of what I need to use here. So if I scroll all the way down, 
it'll show me my history of edits right here. So I'm going to go down to basically the 29th of September when I imported this. Okay, so this is basically what the image looks like, nothing I added to it. Um, and while I was talking to you briefly about presets, like at the very beginning, so these are a bunch of presets that I've either downloaded or have saved myself. And these are like kind of shortcut ways to giving me a good basis or like a color scheme I want. And it'll basically take me to a good spot to begin editing. So, you know, some of these are named specific things like Dino Land. This is literally like a dinosaur park in a certain area of VB that I visit. Um, and, um, you know, it was specific to that kind of photo shoot and like the lighting. So I kind of named it so it'd be a quick save and a good reference for something I wanted to go back to. Uh, I don't know if I have any Sierra, any Sierra uh, presets here. But essentially it's like, if you will, if, if you want to call it this, it's like a cheat. So you can basically click a certain settings, you can see it changing on the right side here. And it'll be like, uh, it'll set you up for like, what your picture is going to look like or, you know the hues of the different colors. So I chose Field 2, I guess this is a Sierra preset that I chose, or made, and as you can see everything's kind of lit up, the yellows are more saturated, the blues are kind of, I guess, like moody and dark, and yeah, the greens are really nice, I really like these colors green-wise, um, it's just like really natural and lush to me, and yeah, so you can, sell, you can tell that this isn't a finished image, because everything's kind of dark. You can't really see your eyes all that well, because this was like evening time. Uh, so I kind of had a... Let's see what I'll, I did, actually. I'm going to kind of go through the edits I did when I was 18. So I guess the first thing I decided to do was bring down the shadows, huh? Okay. Okay, and then I did clarity. So basically, what I did here, apparently what I did here was I brought down the clarity, which means it'll take away kind of the roughness in the, uh, I guess, the dimensions of the picture. I don't know if that's the right terminology, but in a sense, it basically makes everything softer. And so it makes the skin not look as harsh or rough. And then I guess the next thing I did was bring exposure up. And that basically made everything a little bit brighter, as you can see here. Um, highlights kind of does the same. It can kind of go either way. So highlights, it looks like I did, I went down in the highlights so that it brought the blues out a little bit more. I think what I did was I went here, so I was talking about like colors, um, and I basically messed with the orange here. So like as you can see, if I can use a certain meter, um, and it'll basically uh, make anything either saturated or take away saturation. So I can kind of mess, mess with these colors here, you know, I don't have to have everything like, you know, sorted out. To perfection I can kind of just like make it my own colors in uh, editing so that's pretty cool you see the greens getting all lit uh, and then I can change the blues you see how like dark it is it's like a nice dark blue here I can make it like baby blue or make it aqua and that's kind of something I like to I like to play with with sky picks um, yeah so let me actually go back because I just got rid of everything that I ever did ever so I so here you can see I changed all the yellow hues really s very slightly. Uh, sharpen, I sharpened up I guess what it looks like here. You can see the little green here. I made it the image sharper so that uh, it would just look more crisp. And I don't know, sometimes it'll make it a little noisy. It'll make the picture like super grainy and uh, I don't know, a little, a little unnecessarily sharp and in your face so I try not to do it too much now but if I wanted to do that I would go down here where sharpening is Woo! and you can see like the very subtle details that it made it brings back out like see it's like soft and kind of blurry and now everything's like super crisp crispy deluxe okay I'll see here what I just do okay so it looks like when I'm almost done with this image, as of what my edits were, I did a little bit of a vignette, so I basically made the, all the edges here darker, making her the center of attention, um, and then I guess I kind of went a little 
little funzo with the blues here. Like I said, I like the aqua colors here. And then I think I did one last touch to that green, right? All right, let me... So you can see the very subtle difference. I don't know why that even mattered. That didn't even make that much of a difference. I, I'm happy with this. Very cool. You can see like the nice contrast of like the redness and the orangey tones of this with the nice blues and the greens. So it's basically a colorful image overall. And what I like to do here, and what I've done in the past, is doing like a before and after. So I'll hit the reset button here. It'll show me my original image. And then like, when I hit undo reset settings, I totally I take a, a gander at the picture here. And I can see like the big ol' like edits I did. So it's like one of those fulfilling like, sad, ultra satisfying things to do once you're done so with the editing. So yeah, it's kind of like a weird flex, but at the same time it's like showing, here's the edits I made, this is like the progress, and this is what the final image was. Um, one thing I actually would go back and change, you see how there's like a little, like, layer of blue and green, like, around her hat, it's like outlined? Yeah, this stuff is like, a, basically a chromatic aberration. And it's just one of those things that's kind of distracting. You see, like, that unnatural, like, dark blues or, uh, around her hat and stuff. And you can get rid of that or at least lessen the effects by clicking Chromatic Aberration. And you can see how it kind of slightly got rid of that line. So that kind of got rid of that distraction. If I brighten the blues, which is kind of weird, it'll kind of, you see, it'll make it go away. It's not noticeable. But I kind of had to make the sacrifice by keeping that in, because I like the darker blue colors. Anyway, um, I'd also go back and probably change the eyes, because I feel like the eyes are just too dark. Like, she has a soul. She needs to be seen, so let me go ahead and... I think it's the glasses, like, that made... Uh, along with the lighting situation that made it not so accessible, so let me see if I can change up the eyes here. Okay that out and what I basically did was hit the circle button this is like specific to Lightroom because I, I edit with Adobe Lightroom um, and this is like a lightener like a filter and you can do whatever you want to that specific range and so with the oops no 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 so with this um, anything that I edit on this right side will only affect what's in this radius here so I could go up with the exposure and make everything bright. I could go back in the contrast and make everything kind of faded. Um, so what I'm basically going to do is brighten it up a little bit. But then you see how her eyes looking really blue because the sky is reflecting on it. I'm going to do a cut back in that saturation. Ooh, check it out. There's like no blue. Or since her eyes are like brownish, I believe if I wanted to go on like the yellow scale and make it more color pertain more to her eye color. I'll just darken this up a little bit. Maybe bring it out in the shadows. Looks a little weird from up close, but if you look far away, it kind of brings in like that more natural color, you see? It looks a little strange in this situation because I guess like maybe the eye is too bright, so let me darken it a little bit. Yeah, see? So you can actually tell what her eye color is. It's more defined. Kind of cool. Let me just apply it to this other one real quick. Chew. And check it out, dude. Dude's key. Yeah, so there we go. You can kind of tell her eyes are looking more downwards. And yeah, everything's kind of clear. So, actually, let's compare what I just did to what uh, the final image used to be. Because I'm kind of curious on here. Or shoot. Man, all these are so similar, I can't tell which one's what. Okay, this is it. Found it. Alright, so check it, check it, check it. This one's like a little bit weirder with the rim, as you can see, and then the eyes are like not as bright or like noticeable. But on this one, this one has, you know, more eye def definition. And I guess the hat doesn't look like it's been photoshopped in. So yeah, kind of like that. Kind of like that. Kind of like this one better. If I'm being real with you. So now, now that I've shown you like the step by step, like going through it, let me actually start fresh. 
and do an edit complete from scratch, something I haven't touched yet. Because I need to get back in the editing game, and also this will be kind of good to train myself in the process. Alrighty, so this is the picture that I was gonna edit here, because I really like the background, I like the subject here. It's kind of more serious, and it's like, it's cool, it's cool. Actually, which one should I do? There's like three of them. This one's good, and this one's good. I think I'll do this one. I'll do this one. Alright, so this is basically no, no edits as it is. The lighting's pretty good, and I like it because it's not too dark or too bright, so there's no, like, lost data. Everything's gonna be kind of salvageable. So, my first instinct, not being not having done this for a while and looking at the left, what I usually do by habit is look for um, a preset that matches the description or the theme pretty well. So yeah, some of these are like real extreme, some of these are also kind of nice though. Yeah, actually this one's kind of nice. Let's go with Hunt Club 2. Alright, and sometimes if I don't like it and I'll edit midway through, I'll just kind of do a different edit and start all over. So let's see here, alright, you can see how it's like dark on the side, so my initial reaction is to make a little layer here, brighten it up buttercup, so I can do that, and what I like to do is I like to have like, even though the, the background is like blurred, I like to add more detail to it, so I'll up the clarity and get some of those like, some of the harshness out, I don't know why, it just kind of looks cool to me. And just a wee bit. There we go. And if you want to slim it up so that this is like the divider where it like ends, I can do that and you can see how it's not getting the colors on her fingers. So I'm going to kind of do the same aura on this side. I'll darken it up just a little bit. Alright, so that's that. Now, I want to kind of make this face smoother, so it's not too detailed, not too like, you know, grungy, look at that, it's too much. Um, let's see here. I kind of like that, yeah, I kind of like how it darkens the hair and like the face just a little bit. And if I don't like how, I guess, reddish or orangey the skin tone is based on that effect, I'll up this a little bit. And I'll try and compensate by making some of the reds and the oranges a little bit brighter. If you're following my uh, my cursor, you can kind of see like how I'm going through each of these. So I don't want her, to, her face to be too saturated, but I also don't want it to be like too washed out. Very cool. All right. And one thing I like to do is, you know, you, in, in pictures it'll basically pick up all the details. Some you don't really want. So I'm just gonna get rid of some of this. Some of this, the face, um, just anything that pops out to me, and I'll kind of basically get like the band-aid, which will remove certain things from the picture. All right, cool. So one thing I'm noticing here is that the eyes are a little dark, and from far away, it's not a big deal, but it make the image more, I guess, dramatic and also more put together if the eyes had more of a focus and more of a color. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Yeah, see? So like you can see this eye is like more in the shadows. This one's more defined and you can see more color. Um, but maybe I'll get go down on this clarity. Let's see. All right, so yeah, it looks pretty good up close. And you see like very slightly how there's like a blue rim here. It's kind of like a blue outline. Uh, so I can kind kind of make a fix to that. If I brighten it up, you can't see it anymore, see? But also, they're hidden blues and whites sometimes, and so when I go down on that, it'll pop up and be very apparent, so everything is basically affected by this. So sometimes I'll just go down on the saturation if I really don't want any color to be added to any of the scenery. And since the sky is kind of white for the most part, I don't really care too much about the sky. Alright, consensus. I've been looking this image over, and I'm not feeling the edits. So this is where we start again, with a different preset. This one's not bad. Hmm. Let's actually go with this, because you can see, as you can see, there's already a lot of, like, 
life and color to the hair. And the skin is already a good color here too, so all I have to do is brighten up everything a little bit. Alright, so this is already a pretty good image right now. This one's pretty sick. This one's definitely a better fit in my opinion. Alright, so one thing that sticks out to me here is the greens, a little neon. So Chloe's face is already lit up pretty well, but I guess if you looked at the cheeks, you can see like the reddish shadows on either side. You can change that a little bit. See, you can make like the cheeks a little bit brighter or a little bit darker. And I'm going to brighten them up a little bit. And the clarity is already negative 14, so it makes it more soft. Oh, I just realized, if I only want to brighten, and this is it, if I only want to brighten the, uh, I, oh wait, what is it, what is, what is the word I'm looking for? The pupil. And I don't want to get anything around it. I can literally just make a smaller circle and enhance just the brown. So I can avoid getting the blue enhanced unnecessarily. And go ahead and make the eye more noticeable without making everything else exaggerate or exaggerated. So check it out. You can already see very, a very subtle difference here. And it's not too much to take away from the image, but it makes Chloe look a little bit more alive here. Uh, not that she's dead, I'm just saying. Alright, so that's pretty cool. So let's go from the reset and see what kind of edits we've made. So here's the base image, everything's kind of dark, everything's kind of looking pretty good. And here is our edits. So yeah, her face is brightened up, nothing too crazy, nothing too shabby was done, but it made the image a little bit more alive. So here is a nice spinning image of what I would either post or put in like a, a Google Drive and send to my friends. And if you want to see what this edit looks like on other pictures similar to it, then what I like to do to make the process go a little bit faster is hit develop, new preset, I'll do Chloe Williamsburg. See that's what I'll probably title this that. And then I'll go to this one, and if I'm curious on what the uh, the edit we just made looks like on this image, I'll go down to Chloe Williams Burr, and forgot the G, and there it is. And it'll keep all of the edits that you made in the same spot as it was saved in the last image you edited on, or like um, with the image you made the preset with. So you can see how the eyes enhancements didn't match up to this image. So I'm basically going to move them over. Cool. And there you have it. This is a second image with the same preset. It's just a little bit of a quicker process. There are two different images, so it gives you two different like vibes. She's looking at the camera in this one. I can actually crop it down, make it a little bit more symmetrical. You know. There's a little bit too much ground here, so I'll kind of bring that up. And voila! You got your second image there, pal. I hope you guys enjoyed and you learned something. And if you're looking to download Lightroom, I couldn't tell you how much it is, but this is what I use. And it's a pretty easy, uh, standard way to edit pictures. A lot of my friends use this, and I've been referenced this by a few of my photography buddies. Photoshop's a little bit more advanced. It's like the more popular one to use. You can do more with it, but I prefer Lightroom just to give it, you know, I just know how to work, use, or use that one best. But uh, yeah, I guess let me know if you learned something and let me know if you want to see more of this. So thank you guys for watching. This is Ian and peace out dudes.